welcome to Japan and More, where we answer your questions about traveling Japan. Today's question is, what are the top five things to know before coming to Japan? Well, at the end of each of our tours, we ask our guests what they wish they would have known before coming to Japan. And this is a compilation of their answers. So today, we're going to talk about language, etiquette and shoes, food and chopsticks, luggage and day packs, and money. So let's start with language. More than 50% or half of our guests have mentioned language as something they wish they would have known more of before coming to Japan. The Japanese have a limited amount of English. Not as many people speak English as you think, especially outside of Tokyo. So any amount of language that you learn will be very well received by your Japanese hosts. Definitely know the basic greetings. Uh, hello, goodbye, excuse me. And a lot of people on our tours have said that if they had known about 100 words of Japanese, mm -hmm. they feel like they would have been able to communicate a lot better. Some people think, well, I don't need to learn the language because I can just use translation apps. There's tons of them out there. <laughs> but actually, Japanese does not translate directly into English very well. Right. So a lot of times when you do a direct translation, it's kind of weird. Confusing. And, and it's confusing, yeah. yeah. So if you show it to someone, they might look at it and still not really understand what you're trying to say. Learn about the culture. Japanese culture is very unique, and it has its own set of cultural etiquette, do's and don'ts. Um, you need to understand and respect the Japanese customs while you're traveling in Japan because you don't want to offend your Japanese hosts. A few things right off the top of my head. Be careful about phone usage. You don't want your phone to make any noise at all if you're on public transportation or really in any public place. Um, you're not supposed to talk on your phone inside trains, and your phone shouldn't make any noise if you're playing videos or uh, even texting. Uh, another thing is uh, lining up, respecting the queue, the line. If you are in line and your friend joins you, you should both exit the line and go to the back. Don't clump, just line up one behind the other and uh, just respect the people around you when you're in line. Uh, another thing is observing your surroundings. Be aware of what you're doing basically around you because Japan's very crowded. So if you're wearing a backpack, be aware of your backpack. Make sure you're not hitting people with your backpack. When Especially you, on trains. Right. When you get on a train, take your backpack off. Either put it in front of you or hold it down by your legs. Step to the side when you stop to look at your phone or your map or anything. If you want to talk to your friend, step to the side so you're not sitting in the middle of the street, alley, roadway, hallway, whatever it is. Because it's likely that someone might be trying to get around you. So right. always be looking around and make sure that you're not obstructing the, the path for somebody. Also, there's removing shoes. Mm. Uh, this is a very big one. It's a big one. Yeah. Uh, we actually have to teach everybody on our tours how to <laughs> remove their shoes because it's not common sense, I guess, for us Westerners. Yeah, it's not something we do. Yeah. Right. yeah. Um, there's usually a gang con at the front of any house or entrance. Where temple shrine. Temple yeah. shrine, yeah, where you're supposed to take your shoes off. And you'll notice that there's usually a step up, and that's a clear indication that you're supposed to take off your shoes. Right. And basically, the floor and the outside is dirty. And then when you step up, that's supposed to be the clean area. So anywhere your shoes touch is dirty, and anywhere your socks touch is clean. So the idea is when you take your shoes off, your socks should never touch the same ground where your shoes touch. Right. So a lot of people, they get kind of anxious about taking <laughs> off their shoes. So they want to take them off as soon as possible, uh, even if the, the place where you step up is really far away. So then they'll take their shoes off and be stepping in the dirty area with their socks. With their nice clean socks. Right. right. So your socks actually shouldn't get dirty in Japan because you are always stepping up to the clean area when you take off your shoes. Next, let's talk about chopsticks. Start using chopsticks now. A lot pra of, practice again and, and again, again and, and again. again and again. A lot of places <laughs> only have chopsticks. So it's not, it's not always possible to get anything else, like any kind of silverware. Chopstick etiquette is also an important 
factor in using chopsticks. There's things like uh, don't stick your chopsticks up and down inside your rice. Or even uh, soup. Don't, right. don't stick them in the bowl of soup to let them rest. You should put it either on top of the bowl, uh, flat, right. or there might be a chopstick holder that you can put them on. Right. It's a pretty big faux pas to do that. Another thing is stabbing your food with the chopsticks. Uh, use the chopsticks to pick up the food. Uh, don't stick it into the food. Now, this might all seem like common sense until <laughs> you get a big plate of tempura served in front of you, and then you wonder, how am I supposed to eat this? Uh, so <laughs> you, you should not put a chopstick in each of in, in your hands to try mm. to cut like silverware. Right. Uh, that is definitely not something you're supposed to do with the chopsticks. You should only hold the chopsticks with one hand. And you can actually pick up large pieces of tempura, um, if, whether it's shrimp or vegetables. You can pick it up and take a bite, and then you can put it back down. That's right. perfectly fine. Well, another thing that helps is, this is getting off topic a little bit, but you can actually hold your rice bowl up to your mouth. So you can pick it up and bring it, the rice bowl underneath the food. and So that way, if anything drops, it goes into your rice bowl. That's completely cool. Yeah, and highly recommended right, because right. you don't want to drop Food uh, on your the nice clean shrimp clothes. tempera right on your clothes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, another thing that uh, people do is uh, they break their chopsticks apart and then they rub them together. That's seen as a little bit disrespectful to the restaurateur, the restaurant owner. It kind of sends the message that your chopsticks are cheap. So you might be thinking, well, I'm not really proficient at using chopsticks and I'm not going to learn. So I'll just bring my own fork and knife and spoon. Well, some people on our tours have done that. And what you got to think about is after you're done using that, well, first of all, you got to carry it around with you at all times because you never know when you're going to sit down to eat and have chopsticks. And then after you're done eating, you have this dirty pair of sil hmm. silverware that uh, you have to carry around with you for the rest of the day. And not only that, uh, it's just not seen as respecting the culture as much. The best thing is, is try to learn how to use chopsticks. The Japanese people will be impressed mm. by the fact Joseph. that you, yeah, that you took the time <laughs> to learn how to use them, and that's another part of the culture. They'll be very happy that you took the time and effort to learn about their culture. Uh, another thing is, is back to what uh, Becky was saying about the tempera, eating tempera. Sometimes your instinct might be to pick it up with your hands. In Japanese culture, you're not really supposed to touch food with your hands. Uh, so there's only certain foods that are eligible for food, for hand touching. And, and actually, to interrupt, uh, <laughs> even when you're served a hamburger at oh, Moss right, Burger, right. They, they put it inside a, a wrapping so that you never have to touch the burger with your hands. Right. Because again, you're not supposed to touch food with your hands. And next, really think about your suitcase. Um, we always tell everyone on our tours to consider taking a four-wheeled suitcase something that you can have right next to you and it wheels really easily. They're so easy to get on the escalators right. and to wheel through really busy train stations. But still, we have some people that arrive with the kind of suitcase that wheels behind you. And they always say at the end, they say that I, I wish I would have brought the four-wheeled suitcase. <laughs> yeah. So in the, in the States, you don't really think about it because we have a lot of room. So even our airports are really big and everywhere you go, it's easy to drag the suitcase behind you. But when you're in an extremely crowded train station, you don't realize how much more room you're taking by dragging a suitcase behind you. And just when you're there, you'll take a look around and you'll see that I would say 99% of the Japanese traveling with suitcases have four-wheel suitcases, and they keep it right next to them so they can not obstruct anyone else's path and get in the way of other people. And they're more difficult to put to take on and off the escalators, right, too. Right, right, yeah. Uh, also, when think, um, thinking about shopping, be sure to leave room in your suitcase for anything that you might want to buy. Even people who come on our tours who say that they're not big, not shoppers, big shoppers, they <laughs> always end up buying quite a lot of stuff. Uh, we have actually taken people to buy an extra suitcase right. on many occasions because uh, they pack their suitcase completely well, full. Before so, they get to Japan. Right, before right. they get to Japan. So then they don't have any room left for things that they want to buy in Japan. Or another thing you can do is you can bring a, uh, a some people have brought duffel bags, like a foldable duffel bag that's thick skinned. 
And uh, they fill that up with their clothes and then they keep their nice breakable souvenirs in their suitcase. Mm -hmm. And that's a really good idea yeah. because then you can pack your suitcase full and then pull out the duffel when you buy things. Right. Another thing to think about is backpacks. Um, some people have either not brought a backpack, they brought like, uh, what do they call those, tote bags, or they've brought a very large backpack. A large backpack is not necessary. You're going to utilize your backpack a lot. It's a nice thing to have because you can keep everything that you need in it for the day, but you don't want it to be so big that it, it gets in the way of everything. And last, be prepared to use cash. Japan is a cash-based society. A lot of stores, restaurants, uh, shops, especially outside of the big cities, are cash only. Actually, even in the big city, we've run across many yeah. shops and restaurants that have signs that say cash only. Yeah. So don't be afraid to have cash on you and just be ready to use cash. And oh, actually at restaurants, a lot of restaurants don't split checks. Mm -hmm. So if you're dining with other people and you want to split the bill, it's easier just for someone to use cash. One person could use card for the whole thing and the other person could give them some cash or you can both just split it in cash. So it makes splitting checks a lot easier too. If you're going to be using cash, which you should, we highly recommend, you should exchange all of your dollars that you have at the airport. If you come with any dollars, exchange it at the airport. I know that this is contrary to most advice going anywhere else in the world, but I promise you the airport <laughs> has the best exchange rates and there's, a, there's an exchange right there. Once you leave the airport, uh, all the exchanges at the hotels and everything are going to be much worse uh, as far as the exchange rate and they're going to be few and far between. So just yeah, that's because at the airport, there is a bank. It's right. an actual bank that exchanges your money. Uh, so you do get the daily rate rather than from a, a private company that's doing a money exchange. Right, right. You can always get cash at the 7-Eleven ATMs or at the Postbank ATM or the Eon ATMs. If you, you can do that with your regular ATM card. Or you can use the WISE card that we also recommend. And some people get a little bit confused about the exchange rate. Uh, the easiest thing for me is just to calculate the exchange rate for $1 per 100 yen. That way, it's just really easy. You just move over the decimal point to two slots, yep. <laughs> and then you can figure out the price in dollars. If the yen is weak, then you might get a, a little bit of a discount. Yeah, you win. <laughs> yeah, you win. <laughs> As always, we'll include any links to anything that we discussed in this video down below. Check them out when you get a chance. And thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Tell us your questions about traveling Japan in the comments section below. We might answer it in the next episode. And for more information about traveling Japan, check us out at japanandmore.com. And don't forget to smash the subscribe button. <laughs>